we gonna kill something now? Come on, maybe? Something small. Anything. Huh? Don't worry, Lilacore. You'll get all the combat that you could ever want soon enough. Oh, who am I kidding? No amount of combat is ever going to satisfy you. Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, The Shadows of Arm. And wait, last we left off, we've been hired by one of the noble houses of trade meat to go into a tomb and recover an item that proves once and for all that this noble's household is the only descendant of the founders of the town. We have the key, so without further ado, let's go to that tomb. The tomb doesn't look much like a tomb, though. It looks like a very small house. Either way, we need to go in there and investigate. And there's Massad, waiting for us to recruit him, which is never going to happen. There aren't many people hanging around here. There are a few peasants. There's also one militia wizard standing right there. Note how quiet this graveyard is, how there's nobody around that wants to talk to us. But when we unlock the door, suddenly High Merchant Logan appears out of nowhere. Are you a wizard, Logan? Were you using a ring of invisibility or something like that? Either way, he has a few words of advice for us. A moment of your time, Terry. I understand that you have taken a commission from a noble family to enter the tomb and retrieve something from it. I've no idea how you could have figured out that we took the quest unless you were spying on us, but either way, I have no objection. The tomb has been a sore point for far too long, and if anyone can do something about that, I'm sure that you are the one. But I'm concerned about what you may retrieve. The mantle. It belongs to an ancestor of two families, though each is sure to claim it as theirs alone. This can only end in bloodshed. I cannot offer the gold that the nobles have, but in the name of peace, I ask that you bring the mantle to me once it is found. I will not force you to, however. Perhaps things are not as bad as I fear, but I shall leave your actions to your conscience. We're not going to be taking Logan up on his offer, because he's not going to offer us any gold, and we want some gold. Besides, what's the worst that we'll find in here? They claimed it was haunted, but is that actually true? Yes, yes it is actually true. There's a skeleton, another skeleton, a skeleton warrior, and another skeleton warrior. We're going to split our attacks thus. You're going to attack here, you're going to attack here, you're going to attack here, and we're going to have Vaconia attack here. You might as well fire a magic missile over here. There we go, one skeleton is gone. And when you're done, so we'll have you fire some more magic missiles here. This combat shouldn't be too difficult because we have a lot of really high level warriors that are really well equipped. And that's another skeleton dealt with. And I believe one of the skeleton warriors summoned another skeleton. The skeleton isn't something we need to worry about, though Terry has taken a few hits. And soon enough, yep, that skeleton warrior is gone. And this skeleton will also be gone. And quite a few things are here for us to loot. 73 gold, one gem, and two magic two-handed swords, which I believe are just two-handed swords plus one. Still, not bad to sell. Yep, a two-handed sword plus one, and a two-handed sword plus one. Yeah. We'll hold on to them. Anything that we can loot container-wise? No, nothing. We do need to do a spot of healing, though, because Terry took a few nasty hits. Nothing too bad, though. That said, she is short 43 hit points. It doesn't look like it, but she has so many hit points that that's quite a deficit. Let's leave. We've got exactly what we want right here. This item is the Mantle of Joaquin, a golden circlet found within the sealed tomb in Trade Meat Cemetery. The circlet is tarnished with age, but one can still make out Joaquin's symbol on the circlet. We're going to be giving this to the person who asked us to go and get it, not Logan. We want that money. Any small amount of money is good for us. That said, we do have 56,105 gold. We're going to be losing a fair amount of that before we leave, because there's an item that I was told I really should buy that I'm going to buy, despite it being really expensive. So we're going to head into here once we get to a point where we can see the entrance, because it seems like they don't want to auto path towards this place until we can see it. We're back in here, and for no particular reason, I'm going to save. Is this because I know that things are about to go terribly wrong? Things may be about to go terribly wrong. 
so much so that we're going to have haste cast as well. And we're going to have Terry go over to Lord Scarmane and have a conversation. Do not touch me. Speak and be done with it. You are back. Do you have the mantle with you? Ah, I see that you do. Rather unremarkable, isn't it, for something that is worth so much? This is a grand, grand day. Finally, that Luraxal witch will know for certain that it is the Ali Bakars who are the supreme here, and her family nothing but a band of pretenders. Suddenly? I don't usually speak to the likes of you, but hello. Did you think I would be so stupid as to allow you to plunder my ancestor's grave unnoticed? I had the hero watched, naturally. You will not get away with this. The Founder is my ancestor, not yours! Don't be ridiculous. The Founder was part of my family. Or the Founder was part of both of your families, but you're not going to listen, are you? Bah! You have no claim to the mantle. You are deluded, woman. You shall never have the mantle to yourself. No, it is you who are wrong. You shall never have it. The Loraxals are the only true nobles here. Terry, I command you to give it to me now! No, Terry, it is mine! Give it to me! You won't get it, Scarmane. I'll take it from the hero's dead hands before I let you have it. Not if I get it first, witch! And then suddenly, we're fighting both of them! And all of their guards that they brought with them. This is why I had haste cast really what quickly, because Coming. both um, Lady Lilith and Scarmane are spellcasters. You're going to fire a magic missile here to interrupt some spellcasting. You meanwhile are going to now. attack this Laraxal guard, and I think we'll have you switch to your blade and attack here. This is going to be a very short combat, because your health is uh, reduced substantially. You're going to attack here, your spellcasting has been interrupted, and one guard is already gone. You need to keep attacking there, you need to change your target to there, and I need you to fire another magic missile here. We don't want to fire a fireball, because that will end disastrously for us. I want you to attack this person next. Some spells have been fired off, but it looks like Lilith is gone. But Lilith is also here. Meanwhile, Scarmane is very dead. We are very well equipped for this combat. We're going to have you fire off a Melf's Acid Arrow here. There are only a few guards left. That guard has already been turned into Puree. You're going to attack here, and soon enough we should be able to... Well, that's the end of you. Let's attack here, and we're done. Hold in the name of order. I demand that you desist at once. Ah, I see, but this has already ended. <sighs> it is much as I thought it would be, truly. I tried to warn you, Terry, but you did not listen to me. And now both of our most noble families are dead, simply because they could not accept the fact they descended from the same family. How very unfortunate. I am sorry you got mixed up in this matter. You could have prevented the carnage, but I do not blame you for it. I shall send men to clean this up. Good day. And with that, this is all over. We have finished the quest, we got some experience, we got some gold in the form of all the stuff that was on the ground, and we didn't gain a point of reputation. We'd have gained a point of reputation for handing the mantle over to Logan. Let's loot everything that we have here. Mm. Starting yes. with all of these suits of plate mail. There are a lot of suits I of plate mail. There's also I'll this suit of armor here that we don't need to identify as it is Elven Chain. And that there is quite valuable, very valuable, if you're a certain kind of class. Anything over here that we want? The answer is no, I think we have pretty much everything. Apart from the things that we can loot here. We might as well see if there's anything that we want in here. After all, the person who used to live here isn't going to complain. It's locked, so we'll unlock it. And in here is just a tiny amount of gold and a necklace. What about on this table? 20 gold. Not bad. We're going to be resting in a moment, don't worry. Let's go over here and see about selling some of the stuff that we got and looking at this item. This is Elven Chainmail. 
The delicate yet sturdy craftsmanship of the elven races allows them to design many beautiful yet utilitarian goods. Among these is elven chainmail, which is so finely wrought that it can be worn under normal clothing without revealing its presence. This and its lightness allows it to be worn by thieves and fighter mages with few restrictions. Open locks, minus 5%, find traps, minus 5, pickpockets, minus, pickpockets, minus 20, move silently, minus 10, spell casting is not disabled. That is the important part. This is armor that a bard, for instance, could wear, or a fighter mage. Unfortunately, we don't have much use for it, because the skin of the ghoul is actually better than this armor that we have here. So we're just going to sell it. We're going to be selling quite a few things because we're going to be buying that belt that I passed up on before. We're going to be leaving trade meet soon enough. There's really not much more that we can get here that we want. And we'll be heading briefly back to Athcatla. There's some unfinished business that we want to deal with there. Where is that merchant? There you are, hello. We'd like to buy some things from you. And we'd like to sell some things as well. We'll start by selling things. You can have this uh, plate mail here, this plate mail, and this plate mail. You can have the elven chain for 1,500. We don't want that. You can have the shield amulet as well. We don't want that. You can have this gem. You can also have some of the things in this bag of holding, because trust me, there are things here that we're not going to be using, like this spear, this light crossbow, this flail and this composite longbow. Do we want the kneecapper? I don't think we want the kneecapper. I also don't think we want this orc leather plus three. There are also a few things that we need to identify that we'll deal with now. They're not in there, they're in there. Let us withdraw from here this longbow and this quarterstaff. We're keeping the full plate mail for one particular reason. Soon enough, Viconia is going to be able to use it. Quarterstaff plus one, and a longbow plus one. We'll pass these over as well, and double check to see if anybody has anything in their inventory that we can sell, like all of this plate mail. Every little piece of plate mail does help. We also have this dagger. We don't really need this dagger, so we'll sell that too. Why are we selling all of this? We're selling it all so that we can get one belt. The belt that I didn't get before that I really should have, the belt of inertial barrier. But first, we'll sell this, and this, and this, and that, and that, for 1,420, and then we'll sell this splint mail, this plate mail, and we'll sell these plate mails as well, and I see that we have something else that we need identifying. This right here that I imagine is a spear plus one. I We're going to be seeing more tiny now. magical items over time as we meet more and more people that are higher level. They just have tiny magical things. We have 66,858, which is good because this belt is going to cost me 16,375. It'll be worth it though because it has awesome abilities. As we saw before, save versus breath, plus five. That may be important at some point. Resistance to missile damage, 25%. Resistance to magic damage, 50%. We're going to remove this girdle and we're going to give it to say, you, why not? And now it's time to leave. We've done all we can here. What we're going to do is we're going to head back to Athcatla briefly and buy one thing that may help us before we head back Most out into the world beyond. Let us save. We dealt with that situation quite well, I think. Mm, We're going to pop decide. very briefly over to the city gates. This will take 20 hours, and there's somebody here. Morgan, I'm interested in whether your clan has ever had interaction with House Devere. We have in-party dialogue. It seems to me, if memory serves, that our sphere of influence was quite close to your Blood Axe clan stronghold, near Talthara Wern Utslista Hal Oloth. Ne speak that vile tongue to me, black skin. If that moves, I've killed it, but if it be drow, I've tortured it for days first. As for that house of yours, I burned it and relieved myself on the embers and dead. And the necklace of dark ears fetched me a king's ransom in Waterdeep. 
And Vaconia has nothing to say about that. Let's go over here and see what's going on between these two. Look at my wares. I trust you'll find them all in satisfactory condition. Get away, you! I won't pay! You'll pay, you will. Or you's get a face full of fist. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Bully all you want, but I don't have time for it. Leave... leave me be! I ain't letting you go anywhere. You pay up or I starts to smashing. Well, this should be fun to watch. Huh? Who are you? Get lost. This don't matter to you none. I'm not doing a thing. It's amusing. So I'm going to watch. What? Well, okay. But you stay back. I don't want to fight you too. That's it? You're not going to help? What kind of people are you? People that aren't involved in your squabble. They's the kind that don't mind me threatening you. Now hands over your gold. All right, all right, here's your damned gold. I hope you choke on it. Now leave me be. Eh, today's a good day. And they both just disappear. We're going to pop into here because we have unfinished business in this place. First though, we're going to rest. We don't want people fatigued. I got some cheap beer for you. That you do, but I'd like to uh, sleep. But first we'll ask to see if uh, sleeping in the stables is indeed healthy. You ever heard of a horse being called healthy as a hearty human? No, I don't think so. They keep just fine, and so would you. Let's see your services. We're going to rest here. There we go. The fatigue is gone. And then we're going to ready to take care of that lich. I know, the last time we fought the lich, we got absolutely destroyed. But this time... I have a plan. What is it now? First, we're going to uh, get some buffing going. Just minor buffing, because this combat is going to be very brief. We're going to have you uh, cast this here. We're going to have protection from evil on Terry. And then we're going to cast haste. And then one spell that we have that I haven't used yet. We've only recently got the ability to cast it. That spell is Power Word Silence. It has a casting time of one, no saving throw, and is really powerful. In using this spell, the wizard points at an individual and utters the power word. For the next seven rounds, that creature cannot make any sound. This silence completely foils any spells that require verbal components. The only way to counter this spell are uh, either a dispel magic or a vocalized spell. There is no saving what throw. Is it now? That there is no saving throw is really good, because this is going to be our key to victory against the Lich. In the inn, we're going to wait a little while so that Edwina can cast immediately when we get into here, and then we're going to pause. I will you are going to so cast much. Power Word Silence on this opponent. Mind your tone. You're then going to attack. Yeah. You're going to attack. Corgan's going to attack, already. and you're going what to attack as well with your bow. And we're going to hope that this goes off in time, because if it does, this Lich is not going to be able to talk or cast any spells that are going to save it, and combat is over. Take that, Lich. You have ninth level spells. Well, that doesn't make a difference if you can't cast any of them, does it? We have lots of goodies here. We have some wands, and we also have a ring and a rod. As well as two things that we can open. We have this here and this treasure chest. I don't think either of them are trapped. We're going to unlock this. And we're going to have Terry grab the really good treasure here. Not the 73 gold. This long sword. Let's start identifying things, shall we? This is a wand of fire with 10 charges. This is a wand of cloud kill with 10 charges. And this is a wand of lightning with 10 charges. That alone is a lot of valuable loot. But we have this here. Sand Thief's Ring. Held by a Master Thief for the better part of a generation, this ring was put to bold use in the markets of Waterdeep. Working a crowd in broad daylight, the rogue would steal countless numbers of purses from nobles, replacing them with bags of sand so a theft would go unnoticed. His identity was never known, but the name Sand Thief was cursed loudly in its stead. 
It is rumoured he retired, and now lives among the nobles he used to rob. Once per day, invisibility for 12 hours. This looks like something that you could definitely use. The second item is this. A Rod of Terror. When activated, this rod may be used as a staff plus three. Any creature hit by the rod must make a saving throw versus spell, or flee in terror, fearing the wielder as if he or she were a flesh-eating demon from the abyss. There is a drawback to using this rod, however. Each time the rod is used, there is a 20% chance that the wielder loses one point of charisma permanently. It's a powerful item. We're going to sell it. As for this, this is a Sunblade. Specifically, Daystar. Would have been really useful to have this when we were fighting the Lich just then. Whether created specifically for use in the service of Torm, or appropriated at some point in the long history of the Church, the Paladins of the Loyal Fury have made good use of Daystar in their battles against evil undead. Through magical blessing, it is empowered with the Sun Ray, a force of pure life energy so potent that it slays both living and undead. Charge abilities. Sun Ray, once per day. Damage, 3d6, save versus spell, or be blinded for one turn. Undead, take an additional 1d6 of damage per level of caster. Save versus spell, or be destroyed. That is powerful. It is a plus two weapon, but against evil creatures, it's plus four, which means it can bypass some powerful resistances. 1d8 plus two, plus four versus evil creatures, double damage against undead. This is a really powerful weapon, and we're not going to be selling it. We're going to be keeping that weapon. Oh yes, we are. I will tolerate only and when so we come back, folks, says. we've took care of the Lich. Of I'm glad that we did. And I think we'll rest here for another eight hours. Oh, it's a good you. idea to do so. Let's see what you've got. We're going to rest. We could do with not being fatigued when yeah. haste wears off. And so, when we come back, folks, we're going to do a tiny bit of buying and selling, specifically in the Copper Coronet, and then we're going to be popping back out and handing over those acorns. We might as well go and do that. We did promise that we would way back in the prologue, and we keep our promises. Unless it involves working with the Cald Wizards concerning Valagar. We definitely weren't told all the information there. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. Who says I don't use strategy when facing spellcasters, eh? I prepared that spell just for that situation, and it works wonderfully. Spellcasting is powerful. Really powerful. Later.